rental solution for your local and outstation holidays. One startup aims to help you do this and seamlessly. My Taxi India. As the name suggests, you can search for cabs in real time and even customize your own itinerary. But there are various cab companies hoping to monopolize the market. Does a certain unicorn named Ola ring a bell? So how will My Taxi India make its mark? The battleground for cab aggregators just got more competitive. Here is another venture which claims to be a complete car rental solution for local or outstation holidays. And steering the ship are four founders. Meet Harvard-educated Mohit Rajpal, who says he is a travel e-commerce specialist with over 10 years of experience and understands the challenges of running a startup. Adding his expertise in travel and tourism is Satyakam Rahul, who claims to have a deep insight into the Indian B2B travel market. With more than seven years of experience in product development and e-commerce is Anshuman Mihir. And completing the trinity at My Taxi India is co-founder Vikas Jain, who brings with him plenty of technical experience from organizations like Make My Trip. Now there are scores of ventures which give us the ability to book gaps through a few swipes and taps on our smartphone. So what's the big USP here? My Taxi India is an outstation taxi provider which helps people to travel from one city to another city. And you know, we are here to organize the 15 billion dollar market. In today's world, you know, the difficult is to get outstation taxis. For an example, you're in Agra and you're looking for a taxi to come to Delhi. You are helpless because you don't know which brand is the market, right? So where we guys exist. My Taxi India is a platform which helps you to travel from one city to another city. The online intercity cab rental service, which also has a mobile app on iOS and Android platforms, claims to have the largest certified taxi network in India. And the mobile app offers outstation taxi cab bookings from more than 120 cities with 12,500 plus taxi fleets. The founders say this makes them India's largest outstation mobile application. The venture now aims to expand operations to 155 cities with 1 lakh active app users by December 2016. So what sets it apart? Well, unlike other online car rental companies in the country, this one follows an affiliate business model. This means that it works with onboard taxi fleet operators across the country. But is My Taxi India unique enough to beat the competition? In terms of uniqueness, yes, we know there is a demand and there is a demand to this idea in the market, right? We just have to organize. And how do you see the unique? What are the technology angles you get into the picture that's the key of a business which we have got in right so we have launched a system called global distribution system which helps consumer and taxi operators both because from the consumer point of view it gives you instant driver details which nobody gives in the outstation taxi world we are the only one who provides but cab companies are always under the scanner for not having proper checks in place when it comes to verification of the staff in this case drivers hired across the country my Taxi India claims to check the IDs of every driver under its ambit and make the process completely transparent. We'll interrogate these claims in a bit. For now, we want to know how this venture plans to utilize the heavy amount of funding received from Nihon Kotsu, Japan's top taxi company. We have raised the $1 million from Nihon Kotsu and uh, we will use this money to increase our reach in Tier 2, Tier 3 cities. Today we are present in 120 cities, but uh, at the end of this year, we will reach around the 200 cities. I'm about to go meet the founders of My Taxi India. I just have to book a taxi through their app first. My Taxi India sees strong traction coming from areas around Delhi, Mumbai, Chandigarh, Indore, among others. But this venture competes not with giants like Ola and Uber, but with other funded ventures such as Meru, Taxi Guide and Savari, which also offer booking platforms for outstation travel. But this market still remains largely unorganized, dominated by individual taxi operators. So here is what we want to know. Will My Taxi India be able to thrive in the unorganized, fragmented sector of intercity cab booking? Does this venture have a sustainable revenue model? How does My Taxi India ensure the safety of women passengers? Intercity cab booking is often a disorganized, fragmented space. How will My Taxi India thrive in this space? The challenges was like there was no online booking tool available. People were not aware where to go and where to not. And people were calling multiple operators to book an outstation taxi. So what we got, yes, we got 
all the taxi operators in place so yes it's easy for the users so let's say if they are standing in agra they can book an outstation taxi through our app so yes now we have a mobile and web both another thing was we found that in outstation taxi nobody was giving real inventory and neither somebody was giving the instant driver details do you have self driven cars or are there drivers driving the cars we are not into self driven model we have a chauffeur driven driver who comes and pick to the customer but then that does raise the question of women's safety right what are you doing to ensure women are safe yes uh, that's an interesting question so we have a two safety checks like i said first we are working with the taxi operators so first there is a proper check happenings at a vendor's end like a police verification we need to ensure that 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 driver has a valid license his aadhar pan card everything that another checks happen at a my taxi india that yes we ensure that the proper verification happens for the vendor and yes for that driver also who is driving that cab so yes we are double ensuring that driver who is coming to pick a woman he is verified and yes has a better record does my taxi india have a sustainable revenue model yes we do have so like i said we have a one way taxi we have a holiday taxi so I, i think we are the only one so for an example in india a lot of geographies where you know this is we talk about delhi agra delhi jaipur chandigarh it's all about a business what happens let's say if you want to go to kerala you can book flights online hotels online but what about a taxi for a 6 days we guys do facilitate where you can book a taxi for complete 7 days that's again yes it's a huge ticket size close to 24 to 25000 bucks right where we make good revenue My Taxi India is a great idea. I mean, especially the one-way option is something that I wish I had on a recent trip. But the company was founded in 2013 and not many people know about it. I really wonder how they're not getting the word out and maybe that says something about their USP or innovation. I mean, think about their GDS system that they vaunt so much. Uber and Ola, whether they say they're competitors or not, have programs like these in place. And in terms of those not having outstation programs yet, not having one-way rides yet, they're going to happen. Let's hear what the mentors have to say about this as well. Meet Abhinav Mathur, the former chief of strategy and technology at Spice Global and current chairman of Founders Catalyst. He's known to be outspoken and doesn't mince his words when it comes to passing his verdict on new startups. Hailing from Harvard Business School, this is Ravi Gururaj, a mentor to many flourishing startups in the country. Ravi is the chairman of the Nascom Product Council as well as a founder of a startup called QuickPod that is building parcel delivery lockers. Thousands and thousands of Indians actually undertake an intercity travel. And my taxi India therefore getting to that space is the right thing to do. the bigger challenge which is going to come their way now is that you know that particular segment of intercity travel is being started to look by the bigger players and they are starting to also garner some you know market in that particular space so therefore you know it it's something which is which has to be very closely watched by my taxi india my taxi india is really entering a very crowded space and so i think they need to execute almost flawlessly so my key advice to uh, my taxi india would be to focus on ensuring repeat purchases uh, rather than just acquiring more new customers otherwise their customer acquisition costs will overwhelm them because uh, the market's are uh, pretty focused pretty really narrow and they need to make sure they get that repeat business Here's a dilemma that faces many startup founders. Do we boot the VC and bootstrap it ourselves? I'm talking about the best means to fund your venture. And which route is better? Do you aggregate funds and have full ownership of your idea or take a quick loan from a big shark? Let's explore these options in the state of the startup. The right way to get your venture off the ground. Should you pool in all your personal finances without minimum external help? This is also known as bootstrapping. Those who argue for this strategy believe that full ownership over your idea is what matters. Bootstrapping is certainly a good idea uh, in the early days for startups today as opposed to only building products around funding. India has shown that there are a lot of companies which have bootstrapped and have scaled. Good examples being a Zoho uh, which is valued at you know more than a billion dollars. But many others believe VC money is the way to go. But what are the things to keep in mind before pitching to VCs? Before you take VC money, you need to be very sure about your idea. 
and have some proof of concept uh, about your product, some, some kind of a product market fit. Because once you take VC money, your ability to experiment actually goes down. Seasoned investors believe that without external money at play, it is important to have an edge in the business you are trying to build. Once a venture reaches a considerable scale in terms of revenue and manpower, the promoters should look for avenues to raise capital. But is VC funding integral to a startup success? No, I don't think VC funding is a prerequisite to building a successful startup. What I find is founders are going after VCs when actually the business they're in, even were they to have success, wouldn't be a great outcome for a VC. I think there are many ways to build a business. VC funding is one of them.